Hello guys and welcome to my first Patreon video. In uh, this video I'm going to be showing you how I make uh, the smaller leash guard shields for my leash guard. Um, so we, uh, um, we make slightly smaller ones as you can see here, so kind of half size. They're a little bit more uh, Space Marine-esque if you like. Um, I, I'm not really a big fan of the, of the large tower shields that you get. On the on the normal leash guard, these these large ones, um, I know they're kind of the, like the tower shields, and you can you can um, fight behind them with your swords and your spears and things, but they just feel a little bit unwieldy to me um, in the 41st millennium. So I just like the kind of the smaller smaller little ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to create um, a base shield, uh, which is going to be this one, uh, which is going to include the the center circle, the center dispersion shield part. Um, and then the second shield is going to create that uh, the second triangle which fits underneath to fit um, so we're going to use some clippers to start with just kind of taking away some uh, excess that we don't need um, and when we're when we're using clippers it's important that we're not too aggressive uh, and we're not trying to take off too much um, because clippers uh, inherently kind of tear and rip at the plastic so uh, we need to take away small small parts and we keep away from where we want to keep so that that line there we want to try and keep away from that as much as we can and we can do that with uh, with a knife afterwards and um, so this second one here that we're clipping off and uh, this is going to be we're just going to keep that top top little arc uh, those two little triangles that sit on the top so that's the uh, we can be a little bit more aggressive with the cutting here um, still keeping plenty of space though, so you can see that when I when I uh, when you use the clippers, you get those little stress uh, stress breaks. That's how it's going to fit together in the end. The little stress breaks. So what you want to do is make sure that the part that you're clipping away um, is less strong than the part that you're wanting to keep. Um, or alternatively, you just kind of uh, stay plenty of, plenty away from plenty of distance away from where you're wanting to keep. So here, look if you. Uh, um, Kind of trying to keep away, to, trying to take the the support away from this, so that I can kind of attack it a little bit easier and safely. Uh, we are going to do a little bit of filing and uh, a little bit of um, uh, uh, scalpel work later as well. Um, so these are these are the Citadel clippers. They're not bad. Uh, they're a little bit excessive. They're a bit big. Um, if you haven't got any clippers and you're looking for a set, um, I'd probably recommend the Tamiya ones. I'm just kind of clearing away the desk. Um, but yeah, these these ones kind of they do the job. Clippers are clippers basically, um, but these are a these are a little bit large. Um, so what we're doing here is I'm creating a a V um, because what we're going to do later is attack this with a file, and we need to create a if we create a V in here, then uh, we're kind of um, increasing the surface area that the file is going to work across. Um, so again, you can see how I'm as I'm clipping away that the part that I'm clipping away is smaller and therefore it's weaker than the actual um, shield itself and that means that as you're clipping it the clippers aren't putting stress on the actual shield and the stress is going into the part that you're clipping off so that's that's where you can see it kind of being torn off and that's the important thing when you're doing it just make sure that the uh, the stress fracture sort of thing you're not putting any stresses on the on the part that you want to keep you can see those you can see those up here that with like little the little white lines as you're clipping so if you see one of those on the part that you want to keep just stop and, and cut off a smaller part so again we're just trying to make that V in the center a little bit bigger um, and then we can uh, go in there with a file and a knife and kind of rotate and remove small and small pieces of pieces of plastic again. So there, you, when I was clipping there, you can see the stress kind of coming and um, throwing the part that I was clipping away. And then you can grab that and just kind of twist it and tear it off like that. Yeah, I really like these these smaller shields. Um, I've had a lot of requests asking asking how I made them, so I thought it would be a good good first Patreon video for you all. Um, 
we'll be doing some painting ones after this so the next one will probably be a painting video and uh, still just kind of chipping away at it nice and slow it's it's important to be patient when you're doing things like this because it doesn't really take that long compared to um, compared to if you attacked it and then ruined it and had to do it again um, so patience with this sort of thing is is very much warranted right so we uh, we can kind of try and start getting a little bit more aggressive now with the with the knife um, but you'll notice that I've got a piece of foam on the on the table uh, which was not really conducive to uh, cutting so I've, uh, I've just taken that off and now we've got the uh, the grey cutting board I was trying to use the black foam as a bit of a of a neutral background but it doesn't really work for cutting so this is where we can be a little bit more uh, neat and go right up to where the, the parts that we want him to keep uh, this is a new scalpel blade um, I use the what are the scalpel blades? I use the Swan and Morton Swan and Morton scalpel blades, um, and it's just in a little size ten. Uh, sorry, it's the the scalpel blade is a ten ten A, I think, um, and it's a size two, I believe, uh, scalpel holder. And um, one of the things you'll notice when I'm when I'm doing um, kind of scalpel cuts like this is that my fingers are always together, um, so my my fingers are always in contact with each other. So when I'm cutting. Um, I'm almost kind of adding pressure between my fingers, um, so I'm not. I haven't got my hands a long way apart uh, and kind of stabbing at it. That's that's where you get kind of dangerous. Um, and whenever, whenever possible, obviously you can cut on the cut on the mat like this. And again, you can see I'm cutting off very very small little bits, so I'm not putting any stress on on the shield part that we want to create. Um, and then. Uh, the the importance of a of a nice brand new scalpel blade is that we can take slivers and slivers and slivers off um, very very slowly uh, and effectively and in a couple of cuts um, we, we're we're pretty close to being up to where we need to be. Um, there's a little rim uh, you can see as I as I've turned it over. There's a little um, kind of a moat that runs between them between the two parts. Uh, so we want to kind of come up to up to the edge. Of that first um, first surface, and then we can file past it. Uh, so I'm not trying to go into it. like it's very very easy there to kind of get the get the knife and just cut straight down that centre, uh, straight down the gap in the middle. Uh, but we don't really want to do that. Um, we want that gap to be the same as the top part. Uh, so we want to file away up to it and not cut into it. If that makes sense. Uh, so I'm just looking for a file now. I think. Um, it's always good to have kind of like a little group of a, a lot of sets of different files uh, and I think I changed between a couple uh, so this is a round file um, I'm just kind of starting to create that uh, mark in the center that we can uh, make larger and run around the edge um, and ra round files are really good for being quite aggressive and making a, a, a nice deep cut that we can then expand on uh, so that's what I do here. I use that uh, to go right down to the edge. Uh, so you can see how quickly that's going down to the down to the area where we need it to stay. Oops. There we go, nearly there. Um, and then those the the two little horns that you're creating from from doing this um, can be filed away ever so quickly, or even just cut away with the with the knife um, after this. But the, uh, the the circular round files are very very good for taking off lots of material down to a down to a level, and then you can use other things to extend and expand around that. They do make a lot of mess though. <laughs> so you can see me uh, when, when I'm filing here. I'm kind of filing. Uh, down to down to the the depth that I want, and then I'm filing across it. Um, so you'll see me filing at 45 degrees across the uh, across the shield to um, lengthen out that um, lengthen out that depth that I've filed. And then here we you can see again I'm not cutting all the way up to that edge. I'm just cutting a little bit more off, and then putting some little cuts down so that I can do some V's and take some more material out very very slowly. And yes, I've done. I've done. This is the eleventh one of these shields that I've done. Uh, so they do take a while, 
uh, but I think I think the uh, I think the final final result is worth it. The leash guard look look really strong with the uh, and very different as well, kind of subtly different. So again here you can see, so I've got my fingers are very very close together, they're all touching and then the movement that I'm actually doing is just kind of rotating those fingers around so I'm not putting any pressure towards my thumb. I'm rotating that and removing removing material from a twist as opposed to a push, push towards my hands. And then that, uh, that kind of just removes any excess there. Files are very very easy to get. You can grab grab uh, grab a, a small set of pin uh, needle files um, at uh, your local hardware store, something like B and Q in uh, in England, or I'm guessing guessing something like Walmart or um, I can't think of the other large hardware store over in the US. Uh, but needle files are, are quite uh, quite easy to get hold of. And because we because we're only using plastic as well, they clean up really quickly. It's not like you're using metal and they clog up. Uh, so this is this is my this is one of my favourite files. This is like a uh, I got this from my granddad actually, um, but it's like a um, a little rhomboid if you like. Um, but it's quite it's quite an aggressive one. But because it's got those two sides, it's not a it's not a um, uh, a half round one. It's still got a little bit of an aggressive cut. So you can just kind of roll that backwards and forwards, and it creates that nice nice curve that we're looking for. And you can see we're getting closer and closer to that uh, that margin now. There we go. It's getting very, very thin, um, and then when we get even closer, we can just kind of snap that, snap that off with the, with the knife, and then keep filing it down until it's exactly the, the right size we want. Now the uh, the important bit here is, the, the, I don't know what it's called. It's the little the little power power kind of cable that's coming out the, out of the centre of this. Uh, that's going to be the deciding factor on how it fits into the actual shield on the other side. Um, so you can just see it, well, if I bring it back on, just see it in the centre there, it's the part I'm holding. It's right in the middle. Um, and then now we'll do the same thing, we'll just kind of flick, fold those over. You can see how close we are and how weak that is now, so we're just going to fold that over so that we can kind of snap it, and, uh, snap it and cut it off. Again, I've got my fingers touching, so I'm I'm not really putting any pressure that's not controlled, and that just peels off. So this is going to be the this is the bottom side um, of the shield that we've done, and then the top side is is the uh, is the is going to be the one that contains that central central power. Um, shield dispersion or whatever it is, uh, the one with the ank on it, the Necron glyph, uh, which which actually paints up really well. You can kind of get a really good glow account going on there. You can just kind of smoothing it out. So nice, nice sharp uh, scalpel blades are very, very good for just kind of scratching away like this. And you don't have to put a lot of pressure on. The more pressure you put on like this, the kind of uh, the more likely you are a to snap the blade, so don't do that, um, and and b it it, uh, it doesn't smooth it out quite as well. So very very gentle, and it does actually take off quite a bit, quite quickly when you're doing it like this. Um, and you just don't create, you don't quite get the the fluff that you get from when you're filing. Sorry, a little bit out of focus there. I have to forgive me on that one. <laughs> First video, we'll get it right. There we go, back in focus. Come on, Chris. Again, my fingers are touching, so I'm always in control of what the knife is doing. It's when your fingers are apart, that's when you kind of start slipping uncontrollably, so... <laughs> and that, <laughs> that cut on my finger that you can see is actually that's um, from the lathe. I was doing some model holders the other day and I slipped. And again, any kind of any kind of big big pressure cuts, I, I, I try to do my best to put it down on the, uh, on the cutting mat. So that's pretty much there. I'm just kind of cleaning off a little bit of that uh, filing fluff, and you can see that centre part now is nice and neat and tidy. Um, and that's going to be the part that that's going to be the part that we're going to 
um, cut down to make sure that it fits onto the bottom of the next next shield. The second part of the uh, leech guard shield video. So we've already done that that top side. So that top side is now going to. So we need to basically remove everything that is on that top top part now from this from this second part. Now this gets this gets a little bit easy um, to remove because we're now removing things on the outside. So the the last shield that we were doing, uh, we were removing things on the inside, which gets a little bit awkward. Uh, so when you're removing uh, outside things, you can you can basically just kind of attack it and cut it. Um, the troublesome part of this is that little hand, um, because we need to keep that hand, um, and we can actually use that as a little bit of a registration point, and it gives it a little bit of strength. So that hand has got um, it's holding a bracket that comes off the shield. Um, so we're going to need to cut up to that and then cut behind it um, to create a bit of a shelf so that the bottom part of the shield can fit. So as you can see we can be a little bit more aggressive now because we're cutting away we're cutting away parts which are weaker than the whole shield. Um, just making sure that we're not cutting into the... Oh, come on Chris, you're covering things up. Making sure that we're not cutting into the hand. Um, so I try to cut around if there's something that, like that that needs to be kept. I'll try to cut around that. Um, from the other side so again it's just lots of uh, lots of very very small cuts um, and taking small amounts off every single time um, a nice sharp scalpel blade is obviously very important again if you have a if you have a blunt blade um, or even a craft knife you can use craft knives they're fine um, I, I like scalpels they're, they're just a little bit more sharp again my fingers are touching look so my fingers are touching so any kind of pressure on there is, is nice and controlled um, making the making those small cuts. If you use a if you use a blunt blade, uh, it's going to be tearing and, and putting a lot more pressure on the on the material. It's a little bit unnecessary, so try to always try and keep a um, a sharp blade. This is actually a brand new one uh, because this is quite an intensive, um, quite an intensive little conversion. So the the amount of cuts that you need to make um, and very very precise cuts so I, I've changed it and I've got a nice new nice new blade for this one I actually think quite a lot of this is actually done with the scalpel rather than uh, so the last the last one you saw we were removing a lot of the a lot of the plastic and the excess with uh, a pair of clippers so here we 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 can see how far we need to cut up on this because of that little gap between the two panels. So the circle panel in the centre and then the the triangle panels on the outside. You can see how how kind of deep you need to cut in, and we've got a, that little line on the inside as well that we can kind of follow around. Um, so cutting on the cutting on the outside like this, cutting excesses off on the outside is a lot quicker than trying to cut on the inside. Um, again, just trying to remove some of these little excesses bits here never trying to never trying to cut too much off uh, and again you've got my fingers are, are together so I'm pushing uh, I'm almost kind of twisting twisting my fingers together rather than pushing on the blade and I'm obviously doing it off the screen as well so you can't even see what I'm doing well done I'll be back in a second I think I realize there we go so yeah, we're just just removing that little bit of excess excess width on the on the shield here. So the um, the little dispersion um, I don't know what they're called, but the the little dispersion uh, conduits that stick out of the side um, they need to be cut uh, qu quite a little bit into so that the you'll see later on when the when the, the other part kind of comes up and fits up, fits upon it. Um, those conduits actually need to be cut quite a, quite a way into, um, and then on this one because we've already we've already had that that recess, uh, we've included that recess on the other part, so we can cut right up to the circle on this part, which again just makes it very very easy because you've got a you've got a border line that you need to cut up to, so you can do this do this quite well. So these little conduits here, so these need to be cleaned up quite a long way uh, and you almost need to go them uh, you almost need to take them off 
away from uh, the, the full round so you can almost make a, a square a square on the bottom of that, a square edge uh, as you'll see the, um, the the bottom part of the shield struggles a little bit to kind of match up to that again just twisting away little bits of excess just neatening it up um, and then that that is the part that we're now going to have to remove now this this gets a little bit delicate um, and we can take we can take quite a bit off uh, like this so attacking it from there um, just kind of twisting gentle pressure all the way through all the way down don't try and take the, everything off at once you want to be cutting it like millimeter at a time as opposed to be trying to cut like 10 centimeters off at once with the pressure um, so once we've got that down there so now we can start just very 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 carefully making little slits so that we're cutting excess off and you can see the same again I've got my fingers fingers clamped together I'm cutting actually away from myself that time um, but I'm taking very very small cuts um, so that I'm not trying to take off too much and having to put too much pressure on there so and then once you've made all those little cuts the, the parts just kind of flick away like this um, and that, that's basically how, how we get this little recess and this little shelf done um, we just keep keep attacking it with with small little cuts and as uh, you see when, when we fit again fit it on now it's still quite proud it still sits quite proud it pushes pushes that out at the top um, so we need to keep that keep that going away and then what there's there's also a little bit of leeway that you can get you can take a little bit of material off the other part of the shield as well um, to where it fits um, so you can take a, you can get a little bit off that as well so just cleaning this up down down to the edge of the circle surface which is always uh, like I say it's always very very straightforward to do that and now just trying to find just trying to find the angle that we can hold it so that we can actually cut in uh, again fingers together uh, and cutting into here we want to be cutting very very little slithers and I'm not actually pushing down towards the shield I'm pushing um, I, I, as if I'm cutting across it uh, away from away from it um, again it's, it's it's a very controlled kind of rock as opposed to a, a, a stab towards my, my thumb um, so my, my hands are kind of coming together rather than trying to push push the blade very very small slithers the, the the larger a part that I the, the, the larger uh, or the thicker the part that you want to try and cut um, the, the more pressure you're going to have to put on on the plastic and that's where you start slipping if you if you try and cut slithers off every time slithers come really really quickly because the uh, like like we were saying when we were clipping um, the pressure that you're putting on and the stress that you create through the plastic um, if you're cutting a slither uh, the, the, the plastic is stressed very very quickly so it cuts very very simply um, and uh, now we've created the most um, kind of cut out the most uh, we get a little bit of a, a four-sided file and, uh, and we can just very very slowly take a little bit more of this off and create a proper 90 degree shelf for the for the bottom of the shield to sit on so this is yeah like I said this is a four-sided four-sided file so it's got um, it's got teeth on the edge as well as on the face uh, which is why we can kind of uh, uh, rest the face of it on that shelf and then remove remove some material up towards the center of the uh, center of the shield the center circle And this is the this is the this is probably the part that takes the longest on on uh, doing these conversions, um, because everything else is very straightforward. You're just kind of removing, removing as much material as you can, very 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 kind of efficiently. Uh, whereas this is trying to fight, trying to make sure that you're picking the right tool to remove the appropriate amount of material. Uh, so here you can see I'm I'm, I'm actually holding the blade because uh, I want to be very very close. Um, I'm, I'm cutting in um, and if I was using a handle on this it would be it would just kind of get away from my get away from yourself a little bit too quickly 
So always try, again, it's 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 a knife. You can you could very very simply put it through your thumb. Um, so you try to uh, do everything that you can to to minimise that. Always keeping it in control, keeping your hands kind of touching and things. Um, any cuts that you that you can do on the on the mat, then do it. And if you can use a file and you've got some patience, then use a file. <laughs> So we'll just see how that fits now, I think. Um, but you can see we've kind of created a lot of, there we go, created a bit of a bigger shelf now. So that sits in there quite nicely. Um, there's still a little bit of, a little bit of parts uh, that are stopping it going in together properly. Um, so these little bits here that we're now going to remove very carefully. Got to make sure that I'm on screen for my next next video. <laughs> Sorry about that guys. And again just creating some creating some space so that it can fit in. You've got to give it give it every chance that it can fit. Um, and because it's uh, because it's got that gap that runs around it as well. Uh, and then also just in here you can actually cut Cut those, cut back into those. So rather than cutting straight vertically, I'm cutting back into it a little bit just so that it fits a little bit easier. And then that should fit snugly up at the top. There we go. So I think I can probably take a little bit more off off the. Uh, off the conduit that comes out of the bottom, uh, just to make it fit a little bit more. And also, this is the um, this is a little bit on the on the inside of the shield where the uh, where the handle uh, sits. So we can just remove a tiny little bit of material here as well, just to help it sit a little bit flatter. It doesn't need a, it doesn't need a lot there, but that just sits just behind the hand there. You can see. And then that just helps it hit, sit a little flatter uh, as a shield itself. You can see there we've got uh, that's that's level with the uh, the top side now. So we'll just remove all that. Um, then we're going to bring in the glue. So this is this is this is a glue that my granddad actually um, told me about um, a long long time ago. It's the same glue that he uses uh, or he used for his uh, model railways. So it's a it's a company called Slater's. Um, in Derbyshire, it's up in Matlock, um, and it's Slater's Mech Pack, uh, M E K P A K, um, and it's incredible. Um, you uh, it evaporates very very quickly, so there we go. So it evaporates very very quickly, but it holds. I mean, it's it's held already as you can see, uh, but it holds incredibly well. Um, you can get a cheap version of it um, on. Amazon. Uh, it's called Plastic Weld, I believe. Um, but uh, this is this is just uh, just a little bit better. The Plastic Weld's very very good. Uh, I've I've heard good things about the Tamiya Tamiya um, liquid paint uh, liquid paint liquid glue as well. Uh, but I've just got I've just got loads of this. So uh, this is all I've used for a long time, especially since I've got back into the hobby as well. Um, so that's. Uh, that's it there. We, you you add a, when you're working with that glue, you add a little bit to the uh, add a little bit to the part you want to make, and then let it uh, add a little bit more and let it run into the gap. So as there we go, guys. Thank you very very much for watching. That is the first first Patreon video done, and uh, that's making my uh, making my leash guard shields the half size leash guard shields. So thank you very much, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.